65 million years ago, an object from space hurtled toward planet Earth at 150,000 miles per hour. On impact, it triggered a disaster unlike any ever conceived by man. Could this gigantic collision have ended the reign of the largest creatures ever to walk the land? For the dinosaurs, it was a day just like any other. Huge plant-eating giants browsed in the forests hunting for food, while vicious predators stalked their prey. Little did they know that this day would be the beginning of the end. The countdown had already begun that would lead to their annihilation. For centuries, what killed the dinosaurs has mystified paleontologists. Was it a natural disaster? An earthquake, perhaps? A flood? Or a volcanic eruption? Whatever it was, it had to be so catastrophic that it affected the whole planet. 65 million years later, all that's left of the dinosaurs are footprints and their petrified remains. Near the ghost town of Ludlow in southeastern Colorado, fossil footprint expert Martin Lockley has made an amazing discovery that helps document the dinosaur's doom. He has found a relic from the last generation of dinosaurs to have walked the planet. Well, what we have here is a footprint, not the world's most beautiful footprint perhaps, but nevertheless a very uh, important one. You can see, if you look closely, the outline of three toes. One here, the middle toe here, and then the other one would have been broken off here, and the heel goes around to the back. Now this is a fairly typical shape for a duckbill dinosaur or a hadrosaur. If we measure this, it's about uh, 24 inches, a couple of feet long. And uh, the hip height of one of these dinosaurs is about four times the length of the footprint. Uh, we're looking at a hip height that's going to be about eight feet. This gentle plant eater couldn't have known it would leave its mark as one of the last dinosaurs on Earth. This layer of rock here is the same layer that we found the hadrosaur footprint in over there. This whole sequence of rock here is extremely uh, important and critical to the study of dinosaurs. This is a geological marker layer. It represents the uh, end of the age of dinosaurs. So that footprint layer is only 14 inches below this. That probably only represents decades or at most centuries, not tens or hundreds of thousands or millions of years. Geologists call this layer of rock the KT boundary. The moment between the Cretaceous period and the Tertiary, 65 million years ago, when all the evidence of dinosaurs vanished. A major timeline in Earth history, the KT boundary can be seen sandwiched between layers of rock virtually around the world. Everywhere we find the KT boundary, it's the same story. Below the boundary, lots of evidence of dinosaurs, tracks, bones, etc. But above, they appear to be gone, disappeared without a trace. What could have killed all of these mighty beasts? To find out, scientists on the extinction trail are probing the KT boundary. Though sometimes it's not that easy to get to. We're obviously stuck here and we mm -hmm. can't get down here to uh, the Arroyo. Oh, yeah. So basically what we would like to do is to yes. borrow his horse and go through this slop and actually move some of our equipment. For geologist Dave Crane, the rocky outcrop of Mimbral in northeastern Mexico is worth the hardship. Okay, 
Here, where the KT boundary is clearly distinct, samples have produced the first vital clue to the death of the dinosaurs. The rocks that I am standing on were deposited when dinosaurs existed. Right at this level in this rock, um, the dinosaurs disappeared, and above it is an incredibly fascinating sequence of rocks. It's very thick, much thicker than the KT boundary sediments found anywhere else in the world. And way at the top of this sequence, we've taken samples into the laboratory and we found a very special element called iridium. Iridium is special because it's rare. When scientists analyzed rock samples taken from the KT boundary in Europe, they were astonished to find a thousand times more iridium than usual. The same massive amount was also found in rock samples taken from other sites around the world. If iridium is so rare, then where did it come from? Following a hunch, Dave Kring checked out some unusual rocks in the Tucson Planetarium in Arizona. Iridium is a very rare to almost non-existent element in rocks in the surface of the Earth. However, we found huge abundances of this element in rocks deposited right at the time when dinosaurs disappeared. The fascinating thing about the element iridium is it is constantly being rained down on us by cosmic debris. These are no ordinary rocks. They are lumps of minerals, iron, and other elements that fall to Earth from outer space. Only objects from space contain large amounts of iridium. Something must have bombarded the Earth, then disintegrated, sending a cloud of iridium-laden dust around the world. But cosmic dust didn't kill the dinosaurs. So, what did? The moon clearly shows the visible dents and scars of impacts from outer space. And, like the moon, the Earth has also been hit. Here, most craters are eroded away by millions of years of wind and rain. But some can still be seen quite clearly. The most impressive is Meteor Crater, near the town of Winslow, Arizona. To cosmologist Jay Milaj, the crater clearly shows what happens when big things, traveling very fast from outer space, hit the ground very hard. This crater is 50,000 years old. Although it's a mile wide and 600 feet deep, 